Hi there, everyone. Today we are talking about jellyfish stings. So tropical jellyfish and non-tropical waters, mainly focusing on blue bottles. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I'm a pediatric nurse, mum of two and founder of CPR Kids. So let's get into this. The first thing that I want you to do, which I think is incredibly important for everyone, is that you download, and I'll just put that right there so you can see it. It is the Australian Bites and Stings app. So what's really important is that if, you know, there's so many creatures in Australia that can bite and sting you. So I think that downloading an app that has got not only um, the signs and symptoms of the envenomation or the sting, but also what to do. So the first aid and when to call an ambulance, all of that kind of stuff is in the Australian Bites and Stings app. I'll put a link in the comments below um, so that you can, uh, you know, find it if you haven't got it. Um, it's available on uh, Android and on the Apple platform. So please, please, please download that because you never know what you or your child is going to be stung or bitten by, and having that is such a fantastic resource. So let's start with blue bottle stings. Now, I live um, on uh, Bidjigal and Gadigal land, so I'm near the coast, and there are blue bottles everywhere. Every time an easterly blows, you can guarantee that the swarms of blue bottles are going to be coming in. And if you've ever been stung by a blue bottle, you know how incredibly painful that they actually are. And kids, especially who may not have ever been stung by anything like that before, they can be in so much pain and be really, really frightened by it as well because the pain is quite bad. Um, my husband received a uh, blue bottle sting uh, last summer when he actually uh, saw uh, the, the long tentacles and pushed my daughter out of the way. And so it got um, underneath his rashy and down the front of his uh, bodies. And he said that, you know, the sting pain wasn't too bad but because um you know you, there's actually uh you know the, the way that the venom travels and so on it what he really noticed was that he had this hideous pain in his groin and his testicles he said that was the worst part so it's not just the sting it's um you know the other effects of the venom as well so but anyway what are you going to do if you are stung by blue bottle? So first of all, you can get your uh, Australian Bites and Stings app and it actually has creature specific first aid, which is fantastic. So we go to the jellyfish section right there. So um, I just, it's such a good app. I'm going back to uh, the first aid. So creature specific first aid. Here we go. We have jellyfish stings right here. Okay. So if your child or yourself is stung by a blue bottle, now there's lots of uh, different uh, remedies that you've probably heard. And one of them is weeing on a, uh, a blue bottle sting. Not a lot of evidence to say that that does anything at all. Um, also ice, which can give some pain relief, but is not the ideal first aid. The first aid that you actually want to apply is hot water, but we'll get to that in just a sec. So first of all, if the sting is significant, so it's to a big area, so for example, half a limb or more, or it's to a really sensitive area, such as the eyes, the mouth, because swelling can happen. So we don't want, um, you know, obviously any airway swelling and such. So if somebody has swallowed or they've been stung on the inside of their mouth, around the neck, so we call, or just on the neck, um, or a limb where it's circumferential. So what we mean is that the sting has gone all the way around and also stings to the genital region as well. So any of those really sensitive areas need medical help, okay? And, of course, if the person has a known allergy or anaphylaxis to uh, the blue bottle stings, following their action plan, giving the adrenaline injector 
um, if available, and of course, calling an ambulance immediately. So follow those guidelines, okay? We won't go too much into that now, but know if they are um, allergic or severe allergic reaction anaphylaxis, okay? So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to flush the area with copious amounts of seawater, not fresh water, okay? Seawater. So flushing the area with copious amounts of seawater. And then if there are any uh, of the, the tentacles left, then we can carefully pick off any tentacles that are left there. The reason that we don't want to be pouring fresh water on there is because there are these things in the tentacles called um, nematocysts, which are sting cells. And if they get um, excited or if they get um, stimulated, which fresh water will do, they will continue to fire off. So we want to use copious amounts of seawater to flush that away and then pick off there are any remaining tentacles. Now, there's a lot of things out there that say that you should then get sand and rub it over the top to get rid of the tentacles. Please don't do that. That just causes more irritation. So as I've said, copious amounts of seawater, picking off remaining tentacles, and then you are going to submerge the area in hot water. So as hot as the person can tolerate. Now, this person who's in pain, their um, senses of being able to judge how hot something is, is can often be impaired. So as the, you know, the rescuer, the person who's coming to help, you test the water first. We don't want it hot enough to burn them, of course, but as hot as they can tolerate. So remember, a child will burn at lower temperatures than what a grown-up will, so making sure that it is child-appropriate, okay, if it is a child who's, who's I was going to say, burned. Well, they're going to be if, if, if the water is too hot, um, if the child has been stung. Now, I can hear you all out there going, Sarah, where am I going to get hot water from at the beach? So, yes, I absolutely get that. Now, you need to take the person to hot water. If there's hot showers at the beach, fantastic, do that. Um, if that isn't available, then what you can do in the meantime is actually apply a cold pack or some ice. So do not put the ice directly on. Put it in a um, like a, a plastic bag because we don't want the wetness of the ice over the top. We just would like, you know, the dry plastic bag with the ice in it over the top. All that's going to do is pain relief, okay, until you can get to the hot water because it's the hot water that's going to actually stop this process, okay. So how often, how long and how often do we do the hot water for? So you can submerge the affected area for 20 minutes at a time. So 20 minutes in, then 10 minutes out, 20 minutes in, 10 minutes out for up to two hours, okay. If after that... They are still in pain. Um, you notice that they're swelling. Um, you know, you're worried, then please seek medical help. And of course, for any of the other reasons that we talked about before. And by all means, give them some simple analgesia, such as paracetamol. I mean, it hurts. So, absolutely giving them something like that, not a problem, of course, but always follow the directions on the bottle, okay, or the packet. Um, and don't deviate from that. Always follow the directions. So looking at the Australian Bites and Stings app, we've just gone through what to do for blue bottle stings. And that also applies to um, non-tropical waters. Okay, so what I want you to do, I'll put the explanation about this in the comments below. Um, but and in the app itself, it talks about where the tropical waters are and where the non-tropical waters are. And to be honest, if you're traveling, know what's around you. Know if you can't swim during stinger season. Know what's in that water. Arm yourself with knowledge so you're not just running in to a body of water with no idea what's in it. So it's really important that you know. And, of course, if you're a local, you're going to know what's around in your waters. Really important. So we've talked about what to do for that. Now let's talk about what to do for tropical Australia, except blue bottle stings. So you might be in tropical Australia and if you're stung by a blue bottle, then you know. Um, but one thing that's important, and I did have a background for this that was a blue bottle jellyfish, but unfortunately um, the technology is not working with me today. 
it's not. So what I'll do is I'll pop in the comments below a picture of a blue bottle, okay? But in tropical waters, apart from blue bottle stings, then the first aid that you need to do, so we're talking about the box jellyfish, we're talking about the irriganges, we're talking about all of those other stingers. What you need to do is, one, prepare to do CPR if you need to, okay? So no CPR, really important, okay? And, of course, if the person, okay, if they, you just got to get medical help, all right, really, really important. So make sure that you call an ambulance. What you need to do, and if you've ever been to any of the beaches in tropical Australia where they have these jellyfish around, you'll notice that there are bottles of vinegar that are sitting there. You need to pour copious amounts of vinegar over the sting. Now, remember, if you're in a rural area, there may well not be these bottles of vinegar around, okay? Be prepared. If you are going into water where you know that these jellyfish are, keep a bottle of vinegar in the back of your car. Like, honestly, it's being prepared that's so important. So copious amounts, so at least 30 seconds of vinegar over the area. Then very, very carefully, okay, picking off any remaining tentacles, of course, you know, protecting yourself as well. You can apply a cold pack for pain relief, but please make sure that help is on the way. Incredibly important. And follow the directions of the emergency services operator, okay? Because remember, some of these jellyfish can absolutely be life-threatening, okay? So that's, in a nutshell, jellyfish stings. Now, the reason that I focus so much on blue bottles is because they are incredibly common. Um, you will certainly at some time, if you're on the east coast of Australia, end up getting um, stung by a blue bottle. And I have no doubt that it'll be on the news at some stage uh, over the summer months here that there will, there will be swarms of blue bottles coming in. So the most important thing you can do, arm yourself with knowledge, know what's around where you are swimming and download the Australian Bites and Stings app. I hope that's been useful. I will pop the links down below into the comments. If you have got any questions, now is the time to answer them. Oh, sorry, not to answer them, to ask them. Hopefully I can answer them, but if I can't, then I will um, endeavour to find the answer. And if you've got any blue bottle sting stories, I'd love to know them. Please pop them in the comments below. And I can unequivocally say that peeing on it doesn't help, okay? Doesn't work. Don't ask me how I know that, but I can tell you it doesn't work, okay? And the evidence says it as well. So... Um, I will pop that in the comments now. It doesn't seem like there's any questions today, so I will sign off and I'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone.